I don't know who originally coined the term scary sharp for the practice of sharpening tools with sandpaper, but it's been in popular use for a long time. And it's true, you can get a tool that is incredibly sharp with relatively inexpensive sandpaper and maybe a bit of stropping to put on that final polish. But sometimes that can be a long and tedious process, especially if you have to remove a lot of steel to restore an old or damaged tool like one that's chipped, or even to prep a new tool for its first use, such as flattening the back. Today I'm going to show you a variation of the scary sharp process that is significantly faster and more effective. In the long run, it'll also be cheaper because it will wear out less fine grit sandpaper. I highly recommend watching this video to the end. It won't be very long, but it may just be the game changer you have needed to get those razor sharp tools that have eluded you so far. It's all pretty simple. I have a 5 16 inch thick piece of tempered plate glass. Now this gives me a perfectly flat surface, which is essential for proper sharpening. And I've got four adhesive backed sanding discs stuck to it in four different grits. I have 320, 400, 600, and 1000. Now up to this point, this may all seem pretty standard for the scary sharp process, right? Sandpaper on something flat. But the key to this variation, what changes everything in my opinion, are those 320 and 400 grit discs, because these aren't typical sandpaper. These are special proprietary grit made by 3M. They call it Cubitron 2 because these discs are covered with precisely shaped tiny ceramic cubes. The corners of those cubes stick up like little pyramids and they are super hard. So those two factors combine to create what I think is the perfect abrasive, not just for wood, but for sharpening tools. Today, I'm going to prep a brand new chisel. What a lot of folks don't realize about tools like this is you often have to do a lot of work to get a new chisel ready before you use it the first time. It's not just a matter of honing and polishing the bevel. You also have to do the same thing to the back of the tool because a truly sharp edge is the confluence of two polished planes, not just one. The problem is new chisels, and the same could be said for most older vintage chisels that you find secondhand, don't come usually with flat backs. It may look flat, this one certainly does, but look what happens as I rub it on the sandpaper just a little bit. Notice how the scratch pattern reveals a deep hollow in the back where the reflection appears dull. Now I'd rather have a hollow than a big lump to grind away, but the fact remains that all those shiny spots have to be worn down to the same level as the dull spots for this back to be truly flat and for this chisel to be truly scary sharp. I'd normally have to spend quite a bit of time on a tool in this condition, but watch what happens when I use the 320 grit Cubitron disc. I'm going to apply pressure at the end of the tool as I start moving it across the paper. I don't even have to lubricate it, it cuts fine dry. You can already see how fast it's removing the steel because the metal is beginning to collect around the tip. Every 15 seconds or so, I check my progress and you can see the dull spot is beginning to shrink. This is happening much faster than with other sandpaper in my experience. If I do feel the progress is slowing, I can clean the grit with a gum eraser and then get back to work. As I said, this chisel needed a lot of work but I still got it finished in about five minutes. A typical chisel with a back that starts out in a little better shape than this one was would require even less time than that. Now by way of comparison, a chisel in the condition this one started in, I'd normally expect to spend about half an hour with regular 320 grit paper, and I'd have to change that stuff out two, maybe even three times. If I didn't have Cubitron paper though, I would probably speed up the process by just stepping down to a coarser grit of regular sandpaper, but then I'd have to step back up through more grits, which would require more time, more paper, and more hassles. The Cubitron 2 allows me to start with a high grit, use less paper overall, and spend a lot less total time. And now that the bulk of the work is done and the back is flat, I can move through the remaining three grits relatively quickly. I spend less than a minute on each, and I work my way up to a thousand. Now you might have noticed that only the first two grits on my glass were Cubitron 2 sandpaper. That's because it was those two grits that did the bulk of the work, that removed the most steel, especially that low grit. 
the 600 and the 1000 grits remove very little steel. They're just polishing out the scratch marks. So a less expensive aluminum oxide disc worked just fine for those two high grits. Not that the Cubitron discs are terribly pricey. I think they're around a buck fifty each. And depending on how much steel you have to remove, you might get several chisels out of a single disc. In fact, you can get the plate glass if you need it, along with two of each of the four grits in a kit that my friend Mike over at Taylor Tools put together. It's a whole sharpening system for around, I think, 25 bucks. Plus, you're supporting a great small family business from Missouri. I've partnered with them for years, and they are really worth supporting. Of course, you can also use this same setup to hone the bevel. I like to do it freehand, but you could use an angle guide. Again, the 320 and the 400 Cubitron 2 grits cut so well that it only takes a few strokes on those, so it's easier to do it freehand. And then I follow up with my 600 and 1000. I always like to finish up with a leather strop and some paste, and then I'm cutting wood like butter. Today I really wanted to focus on the back of the chisel. That is where this kit really pays off. It is such a nightmare job because it's such a large surface and you often have to remove so much steel. So having a fast, inexpensive way to do it will make a huge difference in how your tools perform. Try it for yourself. What do you got to lose? The links are below this video in the description and also pinned to the top of the comment section. See you next time. I've used a lot of feather boards over the years, but the Bow Feather Pro has really caught my attention. The fingers easily bend in the feed direction. That produces just the right amount of pressure for a smooth and even feed rate. But should something go wrong and the saw decides to kick that board back at you, the unique curved shape at the top of the fingers combined with that living hinge at the base produces a cam-like action that greatly increases the pressure and virtually locks the board in place. The manufacturer claims five times greater pull resistance than a standard feather board, but I think it's more than that. It's really a unique design that honestly has changed my attitude about how useful feather boards actually are as anti-kickpack devices. Maybe you should get just one of them so you can try it for yourself. I'm sure you're going to agree that it is the smoothest and potentially safest feather board you've ever used. And they come from a small family business that's run by two brothers who came up with this great idea in their garage and they've built a business around it. I love supporting things like that. So I'll link to them below this video.